we learned after doing this race that, that I had qualified for a bike race that's been going on for 31 years. It's called Race Across America. Race Across America is uh, a bike race uh, that it, it involves people from all over the world. And it's been going on, like I said, for over 30 years. Now, this race starts in Oceanside, California, and it goes all the way to Annapolis, Maryland. But the catch is you have to finish this race as a solo rider in 12 days. There's another race that most people, many people have heard of called the Tour de France. And the Tour de France is 2,000 miles. They give you 22 days to do the Tour de France. So this race is 1,000 miles longer than the Tour de France in half the time. But the problem is there is no easy way to do this. You have to figure out how to get yourself across the country. Now, they have some, some sessions with the, with the uh, race director that will help give you ideas on the kind of crew you need and so forth, the resources. But it's like the equivalent of trying to climb Mount Everest, except when you go to, if you want to climb Mount Everest, obviously you have to have some skills, you have to have some practice and have done other mountains. But mostly, you show up at base camp, you write a check for $75,000, and they take you up the mountain and they take you back down, hopefully. They bring the Sherpas, they figure out how much oxygen, they figure out what kind of tents you need. All that is, is, uh, is at the arrival point. With Race Across America, you have to figure everything out yourself. Now to do this, I interviewed over a dozen people that had either done the race before, or had been on a crew for one of the racers, or had been uh, associated with the race, like the race director, and I asked them, what is the most important thing that I should know as a rookie? Because the record, the, the history, the 31 year history, half the people that start this race don't make it to the finish. And only a third of the first time riders get to get to the finish line. So the odds are stacked against me. So I'm trying to do as much research and homework as I can. And I was absolutely amazed what they said. I thought they were gonna tell me, you gotta have this kind of bicycle. Or you have to train a certain way. Or you have to have this type of nutrition. It was none of those things. Everyone said the exact same thing. It's your team. The crew that comes with you, that supports you, will make you or break you. You have to have the right type of people on your crew, on your team to support you. Because, let's face it, you cannot do this race alone. So I started the process of recruiting a crew. I started with one of my best pals, John Moore, who, was, who I picked as my crew chief. We had done a number of Ironman races together. I needed navigators. We're going, the, 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 uh, the route that you have to take to do Race Across America, it's in a book, the maps, this thick. Every single turn is in the book. You have to follow the route precisely. You need to have people that can read the maps, read the Garmin, drive the car, and get you there. So we needed to have people that could navigate. We needed people that could do anything, or like people that would be willing to go buy ice, to empty the waste tank in the RV, uh, shop, do laundry, that kind of thing. We needed a bike mechanic. I'm going to be riding my bicycle for 20 hours a day. At the end of the day, the bolts on this bicycle are going to start to come loose. I needed someone that could take a look at my bike, make sure everything was straightened out, tightened down, so that I could ride for the next day. I needed a massage therapist. Let's face it, at the end of 20 hours, things are going to start coming apart on me. I'm going to start coming loose. So I needed someone that could work on me for two hours a night and help put me back together and help me uh, continue to be ready for the next day. We needed a paramedic. Fairfax County gave us two, two, uh, two firefighters. One of them was a paramedic. Uh, we were 500 miles from, a, from a, a, an emergency room when we were crossing over uh, Navajo Reservation area. God forbid something could, would happen to me or my, one of my teammates, we needed to make sure we were prepared, we had good medical support, someone that could triage us. We needed to have a nutritionist who could measure every ounce of liquid, every ounce of solid food that would go into me every hour to make sure that I was uh, not going to bonk, I wasn't going to uh, be metabolically, physically uh, correct. So we had a nutritionist that helped, helped with that. And then we had people that would communicate for us. We had a, a blogger that would write to our web, our web pages to communicate with our people that were following us during the race course. And then we brought along a videographer to visually capture the whole experience. So what we found, in the, in the selection of these people was 
we needed three criteria. We needed people with positive attitudes, we needed people that were completely selfless, and we needed people that had the appropriate skills. In that order, when you think about your businesses and your organizations, what is the common denominator that you're looking for? You can teach skills. You cannot teach empathy and selflessness and positivity. There were a lot of people that wanted to be on my team that I interviewed that wanted to be a part of it, but they were missing A or B, and we didn't take them. And we, we held firm to that to make sure because, let's face it, this is a 15-mile-an-hour moving caravan camping trip. After four or five days, people are going to get tired. What happens when you get tired? You get cranky. And when you get cranky, you have to be able to pull back and think about the team and not think about yourself. <music>